I've had patients who and then, you know, and with each successive stress, their, their symptoms tend to get worse and worse. So childbirth is the number one cause. Divorce is a big one. Death of a loved one. Job or family stress. Surgery or accidents. They felt terrible the whole time. Gaining weight, feeling awful. And, and then with treatment, the, the results are often bittersweet because, you know, they get better. But it makes, it makes them wonder, why didn't I get treated for this 15 years ago? Or how, how much different my life could have been or would have been had I not suffered this for so long? And it also makes you wonder, what if they never did get treated? What if they went another 20 years? So it's, it's pretty interesting. So there's a whole lot of good you can do. It's very um, economical. It's very convenient to many people. And so it's a, it's a really good solution for a lot of people. It's not a cure-all. It it's not for everybody. But it's a really good tool to have in the arm and brain for sure. So a therapeutic trial is... Um, is the, is the way to go, like uh, Dr. Cunningham was talking about it. And it's a really good way to recover. These are symptoms of hypothyroidism we were talking about. Um, so this is going to be, can be in euthyroid patients or it can be in hypothyroid patients that have euthyroid blood tests. I mean, that's common all the time. And a lot of patients, and they say in the literature, they'll, they'll mention things like, um, we have you know, ten uh, percent. They'll think they'll say things like, ten percent of patients on that are well controlled on blood tests with their T their T4 um, don't feel well in the medicine. You know, I don't know what your experience is, but I think it's way more than ten percent. You know, I don't know how they're how they're measuring that, but but uh, I mean, if they're not satisfied with ten percent, then you're probably not going to be satisfied with sixty uh, percent. In other words, you will recognize symptoms in 60% of the people on T4 that, that they're maybe only thinking is present in 10%. And you really can't tell, you really can't tell what the symptoms are, right, until they get better. <clears throat> so you'll gain experience when you take people off T4 and you put them on T3 and you see them recover, then it'll be easier for you to recognize and predict, you know, how much of what you're seeing is, is related to just the t to T3. So after any other explanations of, of these kinds of symptoms have been ruled out, you can give them a therapeutic trial of T3 and see how they do. These are typical symptoms, as you know, of, of hypothyroidism. And I've, I've highlighted a couple of uh, symptoms here that aren't usually considered to be hypothyroid symptoms. Um, I know that they're temperature related and can respond to thyroid because I've seen it, I've seen it respond dramatically well to, to T3 therapy. But it's interesting, uh, I'll talk about this a little bit tomorrow, about the, uh, you know, one time, um, <clears throat> the, uh, one of the arguments the ATA has had against this uh, particular treatment is I've mentioned that asthma is one of the things that can get better. And they say, well, asthma is not related to thyroid. That was 20 years ago. And, uh, and that's, that's probably true. There's, I mean, there's not a lot of research, not a lot of people talking about that. But there's actually the, uh, there is actually studies that show that there are patients with asthma that, that have hypothyroid and that their, and their hypothyroidism can, can be related to that. And there, it, there's also some pathways we'll talk about tomorrow that explain that. But sure enough, you get some patients' temperatures up and their asthma improves dramatically and they can wean off uh, breathing medicine. And same thing with panic attacks. Um, this uh, anxiety and panic attacks. One lady knew that she was getting better when she, she started getting speeding tickets. So before that, she was getting speeding tickets for going too slow. But when her temperature went up, she's like 85, 85 miles an hour, no problem. So, uh, and so, yeah. And uh, migraines, another thing that's very uh, predictably responsive. Um, I really like this because these um, migraines, PMS, these are some of the most debilitating symptoms that, that, that people have. They really hate them. And when they go to other doctors, the doctors sometimes will not want to treat them because they're thinking they're malingering. The only thing they want is pain medicine and so on. And then you get their temperature up and their migraines go away. 
and then you realize they would rather be without headaches than they want. They don't really, they don't really want pain medicine as, want, as much as they want to not have migraines anymore. So when you get rid of the migraines, they don't really want pain medicine anymore. So it's really good. And you don't really see that unless you ever see the migraines go away, you know. And so it's nice to uh, to see that. PMS, we'll uh, talk about so, some more later. Um, body temperature, this is the thing that's most similar between us, I believe. Um, if, you know, no matter how tall you are, no matter how much you weigh, what race you are, what age you are, if, if you know, sodium, potassium, chloride, you know, no matter what parameter you wanted to measure in the body, if I had to put my money on, on which, on what parameter is most similar among all of us right now, it would be body temperature. You know, this is room temperature and that's room temperature, but we're not room temperature. And we're not just, we're not 22 and a half degrees above normal, above room temperature, and not by very much. People say, oh, temperature doesn't matter. Then why do we measure it in tenths of a degree? You know, it's not like, it's not like, we're 10 degrees different. We're just we're just a very little bit different, and we're you know 22 and a half degrees above room temperature is so non-random. I mean that's that's specific, and there's a reason for it. So it's because it can impact almost every every bodily function. It always should be one of the first things to check instead of the last thing. I mean if it's you know if body temperature is uh, that thing that's most similar, you know, that thing that is most human about us. I mean, it's not the thing that we should ignore. It's almost like, oh, well, we know temperature is important. We know thyroid's important. We know thyroid can affect anything, so let's not worry about it. It's like, whoa. You know, it's just like if it's that, you know, it's, it's counterintuitive. It's like, it's like looking at the earth. You know, we're right against the earth, and we can't see how big it is, and so we don't think about it, you know. But... Um, sometimes you just have to think about it. So um, the um, we've all you've heard all about peripheral conversion. You know that T3 uh, getting to cell is crucial. You've heard about how stress and fasting and illness and cortisol can 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 cause um, inhibition of T4 to T3 conversion and it worsens under periods of stress. People will tell you that I was fine until I went until my dog died, and ever since then, I've never I haven't felt the same. And frequently, it'll get worse in stages. I was fine until 10 years ago. I lost my job. Then then I got divorced. And then you know, and with each successive stress, their their symptoms tend to get worse and worse. So childbirth is number one cause, divorce, big one, death of a loved one, job or family stress, surgery or accidents.